I'll start by saying that the way we farm fish right now, uh, there's something horrendously wrong about it. And I'm not saying that as an angry hippie, I'm saying that as a financial planner, the way we farm fish is that we flush half our revenue down the toilet every day. So to understand that, you need to know something about feed conversion ratio, which is FCR. Feed conversion ratio is basically how many kilograms of dry food do you use to get, you know, how many kilograms of, of fish. So most of the time it's one to one, but there's a problem with that because a fish is 70% water. So you're actually getting 300 grams of fish and then 700 grams of shit and carbon dioxide. Now, we all know carbon dioxide is bad, uh, but a lot of people don't realize that the problem with the shit is you get these things called marine dead zones. So there's these areas in the ocean around major cities where nothing grows. This is where our company comes in, we call it On Hand Agrarian. Uh, we do something called Integrated Multitrophic Recirculating Aquaculture Systems. Uh, can't believe we said that. So, uh, it's called Impress for short. Uh, I also call it, I'm too damn lazy to change the water in my fish tank, so I built a business around it. Uh, anyway, so for an Impress thing to work, you need to start with a fish. Uh, fortunately for us, most fish are actually very high value predators, like snapper, sea bass, things like that, and they produce a lot of shit. So the shit is useful because you feed things like that, those are lobsters. So that's the second trophic level. So you feed the lobsters, prawns, crabs, all sorts of things with fish shit, and they keep sand bed clean. And then you've got a third trophic level, which is detritivores, things like sea urchins, sea cucumbers. And uh, you know, they further break down the lobster shit that they got from the fish shit. And it all becomes fertilizer. And uh, eventually it goes into something like that. Now those are called sea grapes. Uh, it's macroalgae. So this is eventually where everything goes. Your carbon dioxide gets taken up by the algae, so it's sequestered, and then your nitrates get turned into protein, and you sell it. So the weird thing about farming fish is that halfway through, I realized that the more shit something eats, the more valuable it becomes. So fish that don't eat any shit at all, it was about $20 a kilogram. Then you've got your crustaceans, which eat the fish shit. That's $40. And uh, you know, eventually you get down to the urchins that eat a lot of shit, you end up with uh, $80 a kilogram. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that interest farming is actually about doing business as efficiently as possible. So we don't hire as many workers as we normally do. Uh, we actually ended up teaching the lobsters to do it, that's the Zoidberg reference. The difference between an interest farm and every other farm is that for the same price of a fillet of fish, you know, that farm would produce one kind of fish, we actually end up producing a whole seafood platter basically. I guess at this point some people are wondering if it's as good as you say, then why isn't everyone doing it? Um, the honest answer is I don't know. We've been doing this for two years and it still scares the crap out of me. <laughs> and uh, the best explanation I can give is actually uh, there was a professor that told a story once and he said, you know, they were pushing interest farms on uh, fish farms in Australia and he said, hey, you can make a lot of money by growing fish and feeding their shit to algae and stuff. And then the guy goes, no, but I farm, I farm fish. And he says, yeah, yeah, you can use the fish shit to make a lot of money. He's like, right, but I farm fish. <laughs> so, you know. Right, so there's a conservation side to this as well. Because we build whole ecosystems, we end up growing a lot of things like starfish, seahorses, pipefish, uh, mangroves, which are actually endangered in this region. So we have a lot of spare trees lying around, not doing anything. The other advantage, I guess, that's relevant to everyone here is that with infrast farming, because it's a closed loop, we control everything. So we know exactly what goes into our fish and you don't end up with things like this. These are fish from a six-star restaurant in Singapore that are covered in diseases and shit and stuff. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is uh, what does the future hold, I guess. Uh, Intrust, this whole concept of building a farm on a natural system, it doesn't have to be limited to fish. It, you, know, you could use insects and fruits and chickens and stuff like that. And uh, I guess in closing, what I'm going to say is that we really need the help of everyone here uh, to try and save the world with fish and shit. The way we're doing things now is a little bit ridiculous. It was kind of stuck in the Stone Age. What we need to do as people is we need to start asking like where our food comes from, how was it grown, where it was farmed, where does the waste go, or you know something that's very relevant in Singapore. Uh, you can start asking why. I think everyone's seen those signboards along Pasir Ris Beach, no swimming, right? Have you ever wondered why you can't swim there but you can eat the fish that comes out of the water? Yeah. So I'm gonna lose my ABA license for that, but <laughs> right. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> I was quite serious, I was actually really too lazy to clean my fish tank and then one day I realised it was sustaining itself, uh, so we ended up building a business around it. Um, but at the same time, I guess the honest answer is uh, there's no competition in Singapore. So we've got, let's see, we consume 100,000 tonnes of seafood a year, we produce 
4% of that ourselves. The rest of it we buy from Malaysia. So it doesn't really make sense. You know, you're an island, you're surrounded by the sea, but you buy fish. How much do you currently produce? Right now, we've actually got about five tons of fish that are uh, just waiting to be sold. So they're, um, yeah, they're about the size of the mic right now. Um, they'll be sold in about two months to local restaurants and stuff like that. Annual production is going to be something like uh, 100 tons a year. Are you going to advertise where we can buy that fish and taste it? Ah, right, yeah. Uh, so in about two months, we're going to post it on our Facebook. Uh, we'll let you all know who the buyer was and where you can find it. Uh, in the meantime, if anyone wants to visit the farm, uh, check up On Hand Agrarian on Facebook. Uh, you know, it's in my backyard, so you get to come down, you get to see fish. Oh, I have a really cute daughter you can see as well with my really cute wife. Sam, can you hold her up? Okay, everyone say hi, Kayla. <laughs> We have an extra speaker slot, maybe, if you want. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I've seen a picture of this. Uh, She's wearing a dress. <laughs> We're not Scottish. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks, Shannon. Thank you.